Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to talk about the basics of VLANs. Now we're not actually talking about how to configure VLANs as much as what do they actually do and what are the steps to troubleshoot them if they're not working. Because as machines have become more and more connected, it has become critical that we understand enough SPLC programmers to be able to communicate with the IT professionals to figure out what's going on. And while I don't think we need to be as in depth with our knowledge of networking as an IT professional, I do think we need to know enough to be able to have a conversation with them. Please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, feel free to put them in the comments. Your question this week could easily be next week's automation topic. For this video, we are using our Compact Logix Trader that we've added an Allen Bradley Stratix 5700 switch to. And we have one of our custom control logics trainers, mainly just to give us a little bit of variety. So first let's go up to whiteboard and see why we would use a VLAN. So on our trainers and on many basic machines, you're gonna have what's called an unmanaged switch. And what that means is it's really a basic switch. It can't manage traffic from one port to another port. And there's nothing wrong with this. In many cases, this is fine. So in this case, our managed switch has five ports. Let's make it four, just, just for easy drawing purposes. And on our machine, we'll just dot that out because that's what we're dealing with right now. And on our machine, we have a PLC, an HMI, maybe a drive, maybe something else. But mainly it's all self-contained and all the traffic is relevant to it. But now, let's say we add a second machine and it is something else. So now we're gonna have eight ports. But while these need to communicate with each other and these need to communicate with each other, these right here actually don't need to talk, but they can hear each other. And let's just use a basic analogy. Well, we're in the PLC lab. This is a big room. We can get 16 people in here. And yeah, four of them can be having one conversation here and four of them can be having another conversation. And they're gonna be able to understand each other and they are gonna hear the background noise from the other conversation they don't need to hear, but it still will work. But now let's add another 16 people. But okay, since we have it segmented this way, now we're gonna have 16 people in this room, eight of them that need to talk here and four and four. So you have three conversations going on and the background noise between them is gonna start to choke the network. The same as if we had 16 people in here talking, it's gonna start becoming difficult to hear. So what we do with the VLAN is we actually are able to segment this. So we are going to actually build walls in between them on this port. So we're gonna build a wall that way and we're gonna build a wall that way. So now we've taken it from one big room that can have 16 people to four separate soundproof rooms where these four guys can talk, but they're not gonna hear these guys. And these guys here are gonna talk, but they're not gonna hear these guys. And we've configured our networks. All of our networks are 192.168.1.1. And then this one is going to be dot one. This one is going to be 10. This one is going to be 20. And this one is going to be 30. Now, a lot of you guys are probably asking, well, okay, if that's so, and we're separating this all out, why don't we just use four separate switches? Well, the advantage of this setup is we have what's called the default gateway. And honestly, in most of our lessons, we don't even talk about the default gateway. But in the case of a VLAN, each one of these does have a default gateway. So this one is going to be 192.168.1.1. This one here is, is going to be 192.168.10.1. Over here, it's going to be 30.1. And here it's going to be 20.1. So when we're entering our IP addresses, whether it be a PLC or our PC or any network device, we always have the IP address a subnet 
and a gateway. Now, again, this is Tim's rule because this is not a networking class, but I've always said that these first three octets all need to be the same. So in the case of this one, we would need to be 192.168.10. And that last one needs to be unique. And then our subnet typically, again, typically, this is Tim's rule, this is not a networking class, the subnet would be 255.255.255.0. Now we also have this gateway down here that we don't really talk about much because typically if you have a gateway, you're gonna have an IT professional that is gonna give you this. And it's gonna be based off of how they have this configured. So in our case, our gateway address is going to be 192.168.10.1. Now, what does that gateway actually do? What it says is if these first three octets are different where we want to communicate to, send it to the default gateway to route it somewhere. So in this case, let's say my IP address of, or just call it, well, yeah, let's just use our PC is 192.168.10.100. And I want to communicate with that control logics, which was 192.168.20.17. I can actually communicate between these two using this default gateway. Now that we see why we may use a VLAN, let's put it into a practical application. And just like on the board, I have segmented this switch so that ports 1 through 4 are on 192.168.1. Ports 5 through 8 are on 192.168.10. Ports 9 through 12 are on 192.168.20. And ports 13 through 16 are on 192.168.30. Also, while I'm thinking about it, this Stratix switch just has amazing capabilities, but really they're not in the realm that I guess most of my videos are on. I don't know. Let me know in the comments whether you think we ought to do, I guess, more advanced networking videos. So right now I don't have anything connected to VLAN 1. On VLAN 10, I have a Compact Logix PLC, and that is configured for 192.168.1.41. And on the back of this, actually, let's see if we can just kick it around a little bit. You can see, yeah, right there is a drive. It's our PowerFlex drive, and it's configured for 192.168.10.142. But out of this section, which is our VLAN 20, we have our 1756 EMBT, and that's configured for 192.168. .20.17. So as I have told you many times in previous videos, as Tim's rule, this is not a pure networking rule, your first three octets have to be the same and your fourth one has to be unique for devices to communicate with each other. So this is on 192.168.20 and these are on 192.168.10. So they can't communicate across each other. But what I never really mentioned in my videos is that third setting when you're configuring an IP address. So for example, if I pull a SIM IPE right out of the box, it's gonna come without its IP address configured. So for starters, I'm gonna configure its IP address for 192.168.10.2. And then it's gonna default to a subnet of 255.255.255.0. For the most part of our videos, we've left this gateway address blank. And actually, I'm going to leave it blank right now just to show what we can do without a gateway and what we can do with a gateway. So I'm going to plug our SIM IPE into network 10. And now I'm going to go first. Well, first, let's go and read unknown IPs. So that way we can see what is out there. And we're going to see we have two devices. The first one is 192.168.10.41. And the second one is 192.168.10.42. And all right, 42, it says right there is a PowerFlex drive. 
41 is our 1769 Compact Logix PLC. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the OK button. And what that's going to do is it's going to save it as our target IP address. And now I can go here and I can ping the device. And we're attempting to ping. We're getting a successful ping. So we're good as far as our connection to it. But now let's plug into VLAN 20 or mainly what's connected to the control logic. Now we're on the physical same switch, but these four ports are configured so they'll only handle traffic for 192.168.20 IP addresses. So when I plug into it, we're gonna continue to get timeouts. In fact, let me cancel and go right back in so that you can see each ping is now failing. And what that is, is so this is looking to go to 192.168.10.141. And this one is not configured to allow that traffic through because this is our 10 network over here. So next, let's take this a step further and let's understand what the default gateway does. So we're going to try to ping, yeah, let's try to ping this from this one's network. So we go back out. And well, first let's read unknown on this one. This is kind of a neat deal. And while we are configured for an IP address of 192.168.10.2, we can still discover devices on other addresses. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the OK button and this is gonna save it to the target IP so I'm gonna be ready to ping it now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to network 10. So we are now on the network of this Compaq Logix trainer. We are not on the network of the Control Logix trainer. And if I go to ping, then we're gonna get attempts and you're gonna see that they're gonna time out. Now let's put the gateway address in so that we can understand what it does. So I'm gonna go back out of this and one, you're gonna get this warning. We'll talk about it in a second. And let's go up to prepare address. Again, we're going to get this warning. And then we'll go down to network. And now, all right, there's our IP address, 192.168.10.2. And there's our network mask of 255.255.255.0. And now let's add our gateway address in. And when I hit OK, you notice it put in 192.168.10 because it knows too, those three octets ought to be the same. And then just by coincidence, it put in a one, which is also the gateway address we have configured here. So now we'll click OK and we'll cancel out. Let's talk about this warning a second while we're getting it. Is if we go into our network setup, we're at 192.168.10.2. And if I hit the cancel button, it's going to give us that warning. And what it's saying is that the target address, which is over here right now, 192.168.20.17, at least by default, cannot communicate with the way we have this configured. And that's because they're on different networks. But using this default gateway, if we go back, then when we go to ping, we get attempted, successful. So now we haven't physically moved anything and we haven't changed any IP addresses. But we've let the SIM IPE know that if there is something that you need to talk to that is not on your network segment, then go to the default gateway, which we have configured in here. And this VLAN is configured to bridge from here to here. So now we can talk to devices that are on 192.168.20's network, even though if we go back to our IP configuration, then we're actually on 192.168.10's network. Also for my IT professionals out there, uh, the opposite is also true. Now, right now we're pinging our devices with the IPE, but we can actually, let me change our network setup and I'm gonna go back to that dot 20 network and I'm gonna plug back into the dot 20 configured network. And let's just say we're plugging into a wall jack and we want to make sure that, you know, our VLAN routing is configured. Well, you could plug this in. And if we go back to our, say our PC and our server room, we're going to make sure the routing is correct on. And first, let me show you my IP configuration. So I'm at 192.168.10.100 and I am plugged in to the .10 configured VLAN. So I can type ping 192.168.10.100. 
192.168.20.2. And it's going to route through our VLAN from 192.168.1.100 to 192.168.20.2. So I hope this video has helped you understand one, why we would use a VLAN and a little bit of what is being accomplished with the default gateway and the routing in between it and gave you a few more tools to help you make sure that your network configuration is correct. So again, please hit that like button and subscribe. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.